I have with me now a kangaroo who wishes to remain anonymous, whose family and den were incinerated in the bushfire of 1961. He said I down with the joys and the wife, when it suddenly felt very hot. I asked my eldest son if he had farted and he naturally declined. I hopped outside and was horrified to see a flaming wall hurtling towards us. I had no time. It was rush outside to warn the others and die in the process or hop to it and get out of there. It was a sad, sad day. I wish I was... I wish I was dead. We feel very sorry for you. The next disaster is one that anyone who's seen any of the With Kylie videos knows is close to my producer's heart. Volcanoes. As I mentioned before, Oceania is a major point along the Pacific Ring of Fire, with volcanoes scattered throughout the continent. One of these volcanoes is on the island nation of New Zealand. Kylie, come, come. I will show you the way to Miller. Um, I mean New Zealand. Oh, 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 oh. Mount Ruapehu is an active stratovolcano at the southern end of the Taupo volcanic zone. The North Island's major ski fields and only glaciers are on its slopes. Ruapehu is one of the world's most active volcanoes and the largest active volcano in New Zealand. It has the highest point in the North Island and includes three major peaks, all over 2,750 metres above sea level. The deep, active crater is between the peaks and fills with a crater lake between major eruptions. Ruapehu began erupting at least 250,000 years ago. In recorded history, major eruptions have been about 50 years apart. Minor eruptions are frequent, and at least 60 since 1945. Some minor eruptions in the 1970s generated small ashfalls and lahars that damaged ski fields. Between major eruptions, a warm, acidic crater lake forms, fed by melting snow. Major eruptions may completely expel the lake water. Where a major eruption has deposited a tephra dam across the lake's outlet, the dam may collapse after the lake has refilled and risen above the level of its normal outlet. The outrush of water causing a large laha. In 2000, the Erlaws system was installed on the mountain to detect such a collapse and alert the relevant authorities. Spectacular eruptions have occurred around Mount Ropehu, particularly in 1995 and 1996. Recently, there has been increased volcanic activity with greater temperatures in the crater bowl and more eruptions. Several lahars were observed around the mountain from September the 18th to September the 25th, 1995. This indicates that the crater lake is being emptied by eruptions. The Department of Conservation immediately leapt into action and let sent out a hazard warning, warning everybody to keep off the mountain, effectively ending the ski season. The eruption and cloud disrupted air travel, closing many airports and closing the entire North Island airspace. Another, smaller eruption phase began on the morning of June the 17th, 1996. The mountain was closed to visitors and the ski fields were closed for the season, this time before they'd even opened. Weather conditions can be changeable over the day and mountain visitors are advised to be prepared and carry basic survival equipment. Although severe weather is unusual and generally forecast, it has claimed several lives over the years, including a party of soldiers undergoing winter survival training in 1990. During the same storm, a Japanese tourist was trapped in a snow cave for several days after he made the shelter when weather unexpectedly closed in on him. As we've discovered in this programme, nature is a constant threat to the people and environment of Australasia, frequently throwing out cyclones, bushfires and other natural hazards. Some parts of Australasia are far better prepared to deal with such hazards, such as the MEDCs of Australia and New Zealand. With advanced technologies, they can predict attacks before they happen. The LEDCs, such as Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, are far worse. One thing you have to concede is that no matter how well prepared or how well off your country is, you cannot protect yourself against Mother Nature. You've been watching Australasian Hazards with Kylie. Thank you, and good night. I mean, good day. Get your tits out! <laughs> Some parts of Australasia are far better prepared to... Fuck! Oh, they cried. <laughs> <laughs> Action. I haven't got on already, I'm not Harry Potter's was good here. Shh. Oh, lost it, lost it, lost it. <laughs> Learn the line, guy. I can't even <laughs> Do it! Do it! <laughs> Two major bodies of water. Ah! What are you turning this movie into? <laughs> the eruption. <laughs> the eruption.
much has impacted on air travel, closing many airports and causing the entire North Act. Simon, out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Spectacular eruptions have occurred around Mount Rope, particularly in 95 and 96. <laughs> then the system will eventually weaken and disappear. Don't mean disappear! If when a fire going downhill meets the flat, the tight of the may quadruple and may slip. Near me! In this program, I hope to give you, the viewer, a guide to the natural hazards in Australasia. What? You can't stop laughing. Stop laughing. Oh, wait, I was going to Hi, the most experienced weather presenter we could find. Here he is, explaining something else to do with weather. Why, why are you filming me? What are you going to do? Why are you just wasting battery, man? Come on, who you think?